Cartoonist Illustrator Toon Talker. I'm here with Jim Bridges and I'm the President of the Australian Cartoon Museum and why in hell's name are we doing another book on animation? What's because so great about... Animation is such a fantastic I know, subject. but why this book? Why this book? Yeah. Why this night? So, um, okay, basically, I'll just adjust the uh, audio down, sorry. Just get it down to a manageable level, a decibel. I don't want to knock your socks off. Um, Walter Foster books. Yeah, they're great. But yeah, so learn how to draw and stuff. A number of years ago, they brought out Animating the Looney Tunes Way with uh, uh, Tony Savone. And um, it's all to do with drawing um, on character Warner Brothers characters. So um, Warner Brothers as in Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, etc, etc. Now why this book is so important is because there's a lot of lessons in here. Obviously, you know, if you're a great fan of um, uh, Warner Brothers, this is the book for you. But if you're not, if you just like other forms of cartoons or you just like drawing in general, this is also a book for you and I'll explain why as we open it up. It starts out with uh, uh, Tony Savone, which is a director of Warner Brothers Animation, a little sketch there of bugs and it looks like a, a car or something. How old's the book? Who published it? Uh, this was brought out in the, in the early 2000, I think, to, yeah, no, 2000, yeah. Um, and it's just basically a very cool uh, rundown of the animation process, uh, traditionally uh, or digitally. Um, and uh, there's some great lessons in here. Now, with drawing, as if you're drawing, you know, realistic characters or any kind of character, you start with some very simple shapes. So it runs you through that. As you can see, a lot of animators use a color pencil because it's very smooth, it runs very quickly, and then you can do clean up with a uh, black pencil or pen over the top very easily. There's, so there's a little bit of a, uh, um, an explanation of the book itself. Um, and of course, no animation book or drawing book would be any good without, um, you know, explanations on how to draw hands. So let's dive in, shall we? The first uh, chapter is on character development. So characters, bugs, you can see the development of bugs with very, very simple geometric shapes. And um, his stance can be explained very quickly with a, a very articulate stick figure. So as you can see, as, as in normal stick figures, you probably see they don't... Um, <laughs> we'll, go in, we'll go into these shapes here. You see, um, the idea of drawing anything is you start with a very basic shape. So you look at the shape of, say, an orc's head and you think, OK, well, it's, it looks like a, an egg. So you start with an egg and then you add little bits and pieces and gradually you get to an orc. The same thing with, with stylized characters or caricatures or anything that you need to draw, whether it be a car or a cup or a tree. You start with very, very basic shapes, very loosely, very quickly done. And then you do what they call cleanup in animation, uh, or you just develop the character more. But I just wanted to explain a little bit why there's a stick figure here. The idea of using stick figures are not what you think. It's not to replace um, the... the, the character, the final character, and it's just basically to get a handle on the pose, the line of action of the character. So these stick figures you see have hips and shoulder blades, and the spine is indicated as a, um, a, a line in the center, an axis. So that's a very important thing. You see the, the axis line in a lot of shapes because that gives you an idea of balance. Okay, so if you were to draw the axis line here, the gesture, it would be an S-curve, similar with this, an S-curve. Alright, so there's a bit of an explanation of the characters. Um, when you see, this is very valuable for a cartoon show, you can see the characters in relative size, one to another. Um, I think this might be a bit overblown, but... I was going to say, that's, he's, he's very short, he's very short. Yeah. This is not a, these lines aren't for a police lineup. In a way they are, because you've got to see the characters in relationship to yeah. each other, how high they are, and what, what is their particular uh, characteristic that makes them stand out from the next character. Okay. 
It's uh, Gossam is one of my favourites. I don't know why. It just doesn't. It seems very. Um, Hassan Chop. Yep. So these are these are all characters from classic um, mm. Warner Brothers cartoons, which uh, make up the universe of Warner Brothers. So again, talking about basic forms, um, Bugs here is described very basic shapes, you know, um, using ovals and pears and things. And um, all of the, the details are then extrapolated or added on to the figure after you get the basic gesture down because animation is all about bringing life to the drawings. Mm. So you've got to make it live. Mm. There's some little tips on tools of the trade, you know, using, using the animation disc, etc. There's uh, different cues, shape cues, like uh, Lola Bunny uh, is made up of a series of circles and ovals. Um, Tasmanian Devil is made up of usually um, like a big uh, upside down kidney shape or pear. So you can start to see possibilities where these, these poses can then lead to something more dynamic. So adding a skeleton, this chapter is called, because um, you're basically adding um, linear accents to the, sh to the ovals. And you need a combination of, of straights or sharper curves um, with curves themselves in order to give the curves a point of difference. So you can see here, you know, there's a lot of um, instructions to animators who have to draw the characters on um, you know what are the the procedures of drawing the arm of uh, of uh, Wiley Coyote for example you know what are the the expressions in the fingers you know how far can you take them how far can you take the um, caricatures of the arms and the hands etc etc so basic head construction again usually with um, the uh, what is it? Loomis concept of drawing a head. You start with a with a, a sphere, a perfect sphere, and then you drop features off that. With cartoons, because they're really um, very exaggerated forms, you usually start with shapes that are not necessarily circles or or spheres. They could be pears. They could be um, ovals. So in the case of or egg shape, as in the case of uh, of bugs. But the, the idea is very, very similar, it's to create this ability to be able to turn the head in all angles so that you can see which way it's facing and then you'll be able to draw the eyes in the correct perspective and the face in the correct perspective to, to help the pose because the head is really an accent for the, for the pose of the body. So this is a great help drawing the face because most people when they draw their their cartoon character they only have one hit they only have one shot of drawing the face from one angle or a three-quarter angle well this gives you the ability when you break it down to simple shapes to be able to tilt the head or rotate it so that you can you know have him uh, 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 looking down or looking up um, or from D the camera's perspective and looking down on and the different head, expressions the and different expressions yes yeah, so that you can get a lot of variety in the, it's, in the it's just amazing how when you look at these images that are so simplified yeah, even they all simple. look like your basic Mickey Mouse yeah. except without his ears it looks like they've been following yeah. the, the basic trope of Mickey Mouse in all different characters for years and years and years when you go back to its simple construction yeah because everything has a simple has a, uh, a genesis from a simple shape Mm. Hands are very uh, mysterious for any drawer um, uh, because they look more complex than they are. It's a, it's a, it's a way of, um, uh, I suppose, when you, when you cartoon a hand, it's a way of grabbing the, the gesture of the hand or the, or the emotion of the hand without all of the extraneous details. So just to be a, the, the ability to think of a hand based on simple shapes like blocks or circles or something like this um, is a very handy tool, you know, whether you're doing four fingered or uh, five fingered, um, you know, more realistic type characters. Um, also, these are more, uh, these are beautiful little. Uh, um, uh, very expressive. Ex 
Yeah, well, their their exercises and yeah, paws and yeah. you know three finger hands and four finger hands, exaggerated expressions and, and mm. gestures and things like that, so that you can get like a vocabulary of hand poses. Mm. It's very important to have this vocabulary in your head when you're drawing hands, um, and even to copy these would be a very valuable exercise because then you'd be able to pose your own hand in different uh, expressions and would be able to cartoonize them, but cartoonize them with, with, uh, uh, with a, um, a humanistic uh, mm. um, But uh, also, ca also character caricaturize them. Yeah, caricature them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, line of action, of course, you know, it uh, basically describes the, 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 the body describes the action that's going on. If the character is very, um, you know, angry, or is is doing or is pointing or doing a pirouette, um, you know, and also this is to, going back to the original um, uh, Walter T. Foster animation book. So yeah. uh, this is what they call silhouetting. So they yeah, be silhouetting. Able to tell yeah. the action just by the by the outline. There's no confusing. Yes, yeah, not confusing. There's no. Yeah. There's no confusing. Um, um, elements. Everything is described by the out, outer shape, the contour of the characters. That just makes the reading of the of the action of the animation a little bit faster. So um, this is a, again another vocabulary of expressions. Um, oftentimes, the animator will go through the expression library of existing material. In this case, of Daffy Duck, right? And he would do, you know different sorts of, he may even write like dialogue notes sometimes. We've got teeth. Yeah, that's, that looks like an early 1940s Daffy. Mm. So there's lots of little notes that you put in there, how to show Daffy angry or really shocked or, or um, you know, uh, um, happy or cheeky or whatever. So they're all different kinds of, uh, <laughs> different sorts of, um, uh, what do you call it? Solutions, yay, solutions. So, you know, it's like the Ren and Stimpy thing where all the characters are pushed and nothing, no expression is, is used twice. You don't want to keep using the same vocabulary mm. of expression. You get bored. You get very bored. Yeah, so you, get you bored. want to vary it. You know, you want to have a, a good um, dictionary of different kinds of expressions for, for the same uh, um, uh, or a similar uh, need. They only used Gossamer in about two cartoons, didn't they? Yeah. Hardly ever a, used. Uh, yeah, so this is used. They're in other specials and things. Yeah. Um, using the model sheet is a is basically exactly what I've said before. There's a dictionary of key expressions. Now, you build on that. You add your own ex expressions, your own um, exciting new, fresh expressions, which you have to do to vary it and keep the character more alive. Because, you know, even with a, a very uh, a, a wide range of expressions like this, um, you're going to find that uh, the Waskily Wabbit needs something extra, something fresh, something new. So, again, on proportions. They're all different again. Yeah. Yeah. Different expressions. He does that a you lot. You know, written, ex rich, written um, descriptions of what you're seeing in the picture. Mm. Then and now. Yeah. So they're different ways. I mean, the model sheets are really, they're called, they're part of what they call the animator's Bible, where in the show you always refer to this thing, you thumb over the pages all the time in your work while you're drawing, because um, you might need to refer, you know, well, how does that ankle work? Or how does that toe work? Or how does that tail work? You know, you're always referring to this to this document. So, um, you know, this book is actually on the desk of all um, Warner Brothers animators, as well as the uh, the bigger animator Bible. So this is based on, you know, um, uh, a smattering, I suppose you'd call it, of an animator's Bible for Warner Brothers. And that's why it's so valuable. Um, for you to peek into this book is like peeking into the, the big encyclopedia or telephone books uh, sized animation bible for Warner Brothers itself. This is an entree into it. So um, if you own this book, you can probably pick it up from Walter T. Foster website 
or eBay, um, is well worth paying. The, it's worth its weight in gold just to research. Just also, to art shops um, carry some of these materials. Sometimes I didn't yeah. buy this from an art shop though. Yeah, but I've seen it in art shops. Yeah. Great character. Yeah. Ornery. So they're different. Um, the way that they construct characters, how they conceive them three dimensionally. You know, even though it's 2D, but they have to conceive them three-dimensionally, so you'd be able to draw the character in a in a in perspective. Dum 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 dum. Do da do da. Yeah. The boy don't pay attention. So every character has their own particular way of um, uh, um, uh, attacking the drawing. They're all. Uh, each picture has a picture of um, bugs in relation to yes, bugs. Yeah, yes. The hero. Yeah. And this guy, uh, Chuck Jones character, he was only used in. Um, Two cartoons, I think. He was using a lot in a few 3D cartoons. Yeah. Duck Dodgers of the 21st century. Yeah. Pussyfoot. Mark Antony, I think, were only used in one cartoon or two cartoons. Yeah. Pepe Le Pew was used in a few cartoons, and there's a, his uh, love lost uh, pussycat. Lee Cat. Le Cat. Lee Cat. Penelope. Mm. It's beautiful seeing how wonderfully um, the final animation has been um, true to the uh, to the to the drawings. Uh, yeah, yeah. To the Bible to the animated Bible. Mm. And 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 look at the lines in this because if he moves so fast, mm. he's got all these swift. Yeah. His tail helps yeah. too, doesn't it? See, even little simple things like you might think how to draw the hat. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's solutions for all the problems that come up with the animators day to day. This looks like it was drawn about 50 years ago, doesn't it? Yeah, they're based on photocopies. Yeah. The, the uh, Bibles are usually photocopied. Um, oh, this is great. Hello, my honey. Hello, my baby. Hello, my rag. You can see girl. where all of that, having Ribbit. read how you do the tilts and the character construction and things, lines of action, where these fit into these character designs. Mm. Um, you know, these supporting cast characters. Three, three whiskers are given and tiny life teeth. by adding, you know, not just uh, uh, front on pictures of the characters, but three quarter or mm. action poses mm. and things, expressions. Yeah, I mean, it's Vicky going back. Buzzard it's going back. 1940s. Yeah, going back. They used to paint him on the side of planes. Yeah. Yeah, bombers. So the story process in animation is a visual process, and uh, it starts out with what they call the storyboard. So in animation studios, the story artists or the story people are the people that do the storyboards because it's all visual storytelling. It's not based on scripts alone. You can't make anything with a script. You have to make storyboards and layouts. And, and uh, this is a little tips on their color thinking processes of creating moods. Just a smattering. It's not anywhere near as uh, sophisticated as, as a as lot it, of the 1950s. It. Yeah. You know, stuff. I mean, that you can appreciate um, creating backgrounds, designing it, perspective drawing, etc., and then going into color. That's a book on its own. Mm. These uh, these characters can't draw for nuts, look. Yeah. So, a little bit of uh, can't draw for nuts. about um, the animation process. Uh, voice recording is very important, of course. These are based, the mouth shapes are based on what they call visemes rather than than phonemes, so um, their mouth shapes, the shape of the mouth when it's saying the letter or the word or part of the word or the vowel, okay, so it's the shape of the mouth, it's not based on the enunciating every single letter. Um, I think we explained that a little bit better with the Art Man book recently. Mm. So um, thumbnails are very important, thumbnails are like uh, I guess a precursor to storyboards where you work out gags a lot and uh, extremes and double takes and other antics. So it gives you an, an animator an idea of where the action's going to go, how far is the action going to go. These are character layouts which are similar to storyboards 
but they're drawn a bit bigger and they're actually traced um, for the um, for the final uh, animation. For cleanup. Well, they're using the actual they're using the actual character in a visual way, like this or well, this, that. This is precise. Or this, drawing. yeah, yeah. So that's when you're beginning animating. That's yeah. when you're actually animating. Um, other exercises, usually, you know, basic walk cycles. Walk cycles are uh, little exercises that animators like to do to explain the character of the of the character, the the personality of the character. Sorry, personality of the character that they're animating. And you can see each character for every different uh, um, situation has a different, um, you know, attack, a different sort of way of running or walking. This is a very angry Porky running, I think, in probably a haunted a haunted uh, house story <laughs> there's a there's a very scared cat like um uh, scary scary cat is, that would be i think that would be sylvester's not really saying what it is. without the coloring some some of them don't look too good do they so keys are in betweens are um key frames are the the beginning and end of an action um, the in-betweens are the build-up, so the in-betweens give the action its pace. So the more frames you have in-between, the more in-betweens you have, the slower the action. The, the fewer the in-betweens, the faster the action. So that gives you an idea of the how far they push the overlapping animation. 505, 505. And the Is that individual squash, frames? Squash They're individual frames? Yeah, well, this would be the frame number, so it would be, say, 499, 500, 501, 502. But are they individual frames on the actual yeah. film yes. or the actual what they're filming? No, no, it's the film. And, okay. Oh, um, this is the pencil test. So this is the layout okay. film. Okay, okay. Yeah. So they're not the frames? No, but they're the same size as the frames. Yes, so yes. Pencil. Yeah. So pose-to-pose uh, -pose animation as, as opposed to, say, straight-ahead animation, which is usually used for, um, um, what would you call it, physics, smoke, explosions, etc., or stop motion. Pose-to-pose mm. -pose is using keyframes and in-betweens. Anticipation, okay, the take. These are different uh, animation uh, principles. Anticipation is the action before the action. Takes over yeah. So in order for a say for two, the action is bugs, budge, budge, bugs lurches or lunges forward with determination. The um, the anticipated pose for that is this. Mm. So mm. the drawback, he pulls back like a spring and then releases, and that's the release. Mm. So that's the same for all of these. And the takes is just basically an exaggeration mm. of the of the uh, of the action. So, fast action, sometimes you have multiple images in fast action, um, or smears, or other things, you know, like it can be very funny, but it's very effective. It's kind of uh, based on photography in a way. Yeah, sort of yeah, multiple yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, but it works very effectively. So, really exaggerated um, uh, takes, expressions, and things. Uh, squash and stretch, of course. Um, the key with squash and stretch is like to, with everything you squash, you stretch. So in other words, it, it maintains roughly the same volume. When it's compressed, it spills out at the side. Daffy looks a bit like Donald up there, doesn't he? Yeah. Even there. A duck is a duck. Yeah, but a black duck. Yeah. More about squash and stretch. People love squash and stretch. Of course, it's the uh, well, it's the basic, the, the hallmark of yeah. cartoons, of animated yeah. cartoons. These are some nice. It's, it's good to sort of see where the frames start and end. You know, this is one frame one forty one. This is frame one forty five. So these are probably key frames, and you mm. have one, two, three, four frames in between these two. These two images. Mm. Straight ahead animation 
usually, I mean, you can use it for, for walk cycles because it's very, yeah. very rhythmic. Yeah. But usually you use straight ahead anim animation in 2D animation for um, effects. Yeah. And in, in, in a lot of films, they actually animate the background much more than I do the actual first character. Yeah. You know. um, there's, Going up hills. And... Straight ahead animation is very hard because mm. um, you don't really know how long it's going to play. You may mm. overshoot the mark, mm. have too many out. There's too no many... beginning or end in, it, in the sense that, or perceived. In, in a sense. Perceived. Yeah. yeah. So you use it very sparingly, and as I said, it plays out very well with rhythmic things and uh, usually fire and explosions and smoke and things like that. Now, acting, just of course, expressions, is the really. animator acting with a mirror, coming up with solutions yeah. to problems, you know, on how to um, deliver dialogue. Yeah. So the, the animator, the key, the the animator this, has the mirror next to him. Yes, but the key with this is, like the Ren and Stimpy principle, don't come up with solutions that are tried and true. Come up with fresh ideas and variations. Unexpected, yeah, unexpected. Unexpected, that gives it spice. That's because we, when you look at animation, there's a lot of static imagery. Yeah. A lot of it. I mean, this he is could almost, basically... This is almost crumb. like the classic crumb picture, yeah, that's what I'm going to say. He could, he could have gone crumb with this. Why not? Well, crumb... <laughs> Maybe it's too, too scary for kids. Yeah, too scary for kids, yeah. Putting it all together, these are some examples of uh, final frames, you know. Um, what we're actually talking there is about Crumb. Robert Crumb did this picture. I think it was, uh, I think it was nine drawings. And this guy takes LSD, or takes a puff of something, and he just physically melts like a candle. Mm. But this has this expression, it's very similar, very similar. Yeah. So uh, putting it all together, this is uh, an example of, um, what the final frames of film look like. Mm. So you get a lot of variety. And there he is, Tony Storm. And he Robert's looks, director. he's got a calendar of um, the honeymooners in the background and he looks a bit like Ralph himself, doesn't he? <laughs> Ralph Cranston. Uh, Ralph here, boy. <laughs> so that's it. It's a beautiful um, book and um, well worth the. Uh, Da, 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 give it to da, yourself da, as a present, da, go on to da, eBay da, and da, suss it out. Da, da. Or um, indeed go into the Walter Foster site, they may be able to find it. Um, this was very rare uh, for a while. Now you tell everybody. Oh, yeah. It's been reproduced. Uh, well, I don't know, this is not the reproduced one. Mm. But, um, you know, this is, you must own this if you're an artist. Okay.